What's good? I'm you okay, good? man. What's good? How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. So yeah, the Grammy nominations dropped last week. And yeah, a couple man, of our deal. stars, you know, got nominations here and there. Big deal, man. So big what deal. do these Grammy nominations say about Afrobeats? Yeah, so, uh, you know, over the years, those nominate we have like um, the African artists have been able to, they have been nominated in two categories, mainly global music, global album category they, they created a global music performance, performance yeah. where we had like some nominations as well so most of the artists that have gotten into that category are traditional indigenous type of artists angeli kijo femi shionkuti madekuti kik sonia you de know, salif keita yusuf Ondo. those are the guys that have been able to get into that category because that's how they view african music their perception their perception of african music comes from like the indigenous kind of music we make for the cultural significance and for the musicality you know the musical identity carries so that's how the grammys view african music but i mean with bonner boy like having such incredible success and critical acclaim he was able to get into the category with african giants then win it with twice a store which like give contemporary and mainstream african music a chance to get into that category yeah right so now that has like evolved slowly into having the african music performance category but it doesn't necessarily change the way uh, the grammys see african music they still uh, although the, due to bonaboy's exploits we can see like more Af- we can expect more contemporary and mainstream african albums to get into that category like timeless is timeless was nominated right but it still favors the traditional indigenous yeah. concepts of music so uh so like but when it comes to the mainstream how africa how the west how the grammys view african music is not really entirely, entirely like radical it's still from a perception of a dominant worldview right so the previous one was from an indigenous cultural perceptive uh, perception from now it's from a small form of like a, a nigerian point of view when it comes to the mainstream because 80 mm-hmm. percent of the the worst perception of African mainstream music comes from Nigeria. And that's why you see Nigerians dominated the African music performance category. I mean, it, I, I like to think a lot more because there were, there were over like uh, 200 songs submitted. Yeah, submitted for that category alone, right? And at least a good bunch of that submissions came from other African countries, right? But they, they, they didn't favor those particular you know demography because of the they don't have the international because this thing has to do with a lot of a lot of optics as well positioning they don't have the positioning of afrobeats they don't have the position of afrobeat artists afrobeat artists are global they're assigned to american labels international labels you know so they have they have this they have the right optics the rest of the the rest of the the continent when it comes to the mainstream they don't have that kind of optics they don't they do not have that kind of reach right so even though those songs some of those songs that were possibly submitted were also critical they were possibly very critically good mm-hmm. you understand like so it it's it, it they favored more mainstream more commercial music than more critical music mm-hmm. so the perception of the west the perception of the grammy still favors uh, still favors like nigeria still, still views african contemporary music from a nigerian point of view so that's how they see it right now so possibly maybe as the year goes on as the year goes on we will we'll see more african artists get nominated in the african music performance mm-hmm. category right maybe it's francophone artists busophone you know artists from north africa right maybe then the, maybe they try to balance it out maybe commerciality on one side critical mm-hmm. acclaim on the other side. side but right now the way they view it is when it comes to critical acclaim they lead towards the indigenous traditional concepts right and when it comes to commercial acclaim it's just entirely afrobeats so that's how the that's how the view is still a bit it's still it's, it's getting more balanced and getting more nuanced but it's still the the mindset the way they view it what informs their decision it's still very very it's still very much linear is it that this or, or, or that. that yeah so what is the dominance of afrobeats as a genre or movement say about the african music industry yeah so uh it just shows it just shows the okay it just shows the domination of nigerian contemporary music on the continent that's just like it's when you look at the grammy the, when you look at the Grammys, right? When you look at the three categories where Africans were nominated, mm-hmm. it shows that when it comes to international acclaim, yeah. when it comes to global reach, it is Nigerian music, it's mm. Nigerian mainstream music. And it also like if there were any doubts, not that they should be, yeah. right? not that they should be, but if they are, if at all there were any doubts about the status of Nigerian music industry being the 001 of the African continent, the Grammy nomination cleared it. They cleared it, right? So that's why we see 
we, 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 we can see that the I think there were five nominee, nom, nominees yes. in the African music performance category. David, Nigerian, Bonda, Nigerian, Ayrasta, Nigerian, Olamidi, and Ashake, Nigerian. Yeah. The only person that wasn't Nigerian was Tyler. And, and they probably felt, oh, okay, let's just balance this out, right? It's just, let, let it not look like a Nigerian category. So she's the diversity higher. <laughs> yeah. We call it African, so let's yeah. put someone else there. And she yeah. had a fantastic, she's having a fantastic uh, fantastic year with water, right? So, mm -hmm. the tree water, which, again, as I said, I, I believe it's an Afrobeat song. It's an Afrobeat song. It's a measure of RB. And we got yeah, my piano, with pop music, which is entirely Afrobeat. Sure. So, so it's uh, so yeah, so it's, it has Afrobeat leaning. So you can see the influence of Afrobeat. And and shout South Africa, shout because they, they 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 brought my piano and we borrowed it. And it's you know, it's, it's crazy because <laughs> South Africa owns my piano. Yeah. They're grabbing the piano. Yeah. They grabbed me not my piano. But then my piano is not the days in Nigeria. Yeah, my piano. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it's, tweets about that. It's Ashakes about my piano, right? Yeah. So. So it just really reflects how dominant Nigerian. Nigerian music industry is. And also, it shows that uh, with time, right? With mm -hmm. time, there will be more cultural cross-pollination within the continent and others should be able to borrow from the most dominant. So I think what's happening is like maybe people clutch to their own local creations, like their local sub genres they created, and they don't want to explore from other, other parts of the continent mm. as much as Nigerians are willing to do. Sure. If a sound starts popping from Kenya Thank or you. from uh, Angola tomorrow, and it's getting acclaimed, and people are playing it in clubs all over the world, Nigerians will get on that sound, I domesticate agree. it, adjust it for local content, and put it out, right? So, so I think the people that are doing that now, uh, outside Nigeria and Ghana, which our mainstream pop music is very similar, uh, very similar, it's uh, it's South Africa. Mm -hmm. Last year, the biggest South African song is, is, is Afrobeat. It's Shete, uh, Kill. So it was Afrobeat inspired. It had a Nigerian producer on it. Oh. And this year, the biggest South African song, at least internationally, yeah. uh, it's still Afrobeat. It's Tyler's, it's Tyler's yeah, uh, it's water. water. Which, so might again, argue that it's not Afrobeat, but I still think it. And, and she was, that's why she was, she was, um, she 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 got to number one on the Billboard Afrobeat chart, I think, on the UK Afrobeat yeah. chart, and, and they celebrated it. I mean, if you guys insisted it was not Afrobeat, you guys should have maybe written them a letter. She only <laughs> worded it and said, "Please remove us from this category. Yeah. We do not identify as Afrobeat." Right. So I think Afrobeat as a movement is giving African contemporary music a really a commercial face globally, right? And everything, every every other sub genre, every other genres. Of Afri Afri every other African mainstream genres can fit in, from a piano to you know to the to the, the uh, to sukus and all the other uh, genres in, across Africa. That's why you see this uh, the UK Billboard charts. We have people like a uh, like a piano guys, Tyler, ICU, and Co. Charting on the on the chart, you know, mm -hmm. on the chart, even though quote unquote did not make Afrobeat on the sure. piano, right? So so it's it's it shows the dominance, it shows the leadership role Afrobeat is playing internationally yeah. and it, it, it captures it right so it just shows that okay we we had this strong movement going on right and there's a way we could like make like we could possibly even unify nigeria contemporary and african contemporary mainstream sound and even though there's going to be varieties sub genres yeah. you can have like everyone can fit into a particular narrative and it's easier for people to gain success from it because mm -hmm. right now afro to the world favors nigerian artists more than it favors every other person I because agree. others are not it, they're not really willing to bring themselves under that umbrella. So I think this, the, the Grammys, the Grammy nominations and the dominance of Nigeria in those categories would suggest to these artists that, okay, how can we bring ourselves under this umbrella? Can we, should we try to make Afrobeat? Should we feature more Nigerians? Should we like adjust the sound to appeal to the contemporary international community? Mm. So, but, but all, all in all, all in all, it just like, it just, it just restates what we already know that Nigerian, music industry is the leading force when it comes to the African music industry. All right, so let's talk about these Grammy nominations, right? Yeah. So what are the chances of Nigerian artists at the Grammys? I'm sure this is what everyone wanted to hear. Yeah, that was what we've been saying since. Honestly. Just, <laughs> just, it's like, get down to it, get down to it. So yeah. the chances, right? So first and foremost, right, shout out to everybody. Mm -hmm. Shout out to everybody, all the nominees. Like, you won. I, I know it's cliche, it's Amen. cliche. <laughs> the fact that you're nominated, you've won. But seriously, it's a big deal. It's a big deal, like for these guys to get nominations, David O three nominations, Wonder Boy four nominations. It's a huge deal. Mm -hmm. Set a new Nigerian record, the first Nigerian to get four nominations in one. one year, and also the first Nigerian to get ten total nominations, and the first Nigerian to also get nominated five consecutive years. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. So what are the chances? I think 
the chances of Nigerian artists are good. I think they're very good, right? But I think we have to analyze it category by category, right? Let's not just generalize. So let's start from the global music performance Performer. category. Yeah. We had David Oz, we have David Oz few. We have Bonner Boys, City Boy. That's those, those are our our like uh representatives, representatives. <laughs> yes, in those categories, right? <laughs> Again, now Bonner Boys if you write in all these categories. Because mm. number one, I don't like to say uh, it might not be a very flattering thing to say, but he's a Grammy boy. He's a Grammy baby. Like it's consistency there, they'll be nominating year in after year, year in, year in, year out. Like if you drop an album next year, they're going to nominate him because it's shown consistency. He knows the academy, you know, he's an insider, he's a super, he's a global star, and he's the face of African music right now. Hmm. Yeah, he's the face of African music right now. He's the biggest artist out of the continent right I mean, now. The Grammy said that themselves. Yeah, the Grammy said that himself. So, yeah. so he's a favorite, right? Hmm. But at the same time, uh, these global music categories, they like to give it like a global representation. So you cannot tell who's going to win. Mm -hmm. Last year, I think uh, the guys from SC won. Mm -hmm. Papi Pupa and and yeah, the, the one. So this year, this year, I think, I think Aruf, uh, let me, I want to look at the name. Let yeah. me know massacre people's name. Yeah. So, uh, so there, there's Aruf after she's Pakistani. Pakistani? Yeah, she, she's Pakistani. Good and global. She, okay. Yeah, she was, she, she won Best New Art. Uh, she was nominated for Best New Artist last year. Oh. Yeah, and she won best world, world music performance last year, so the, she's like on she's a equal standing to... with Bonner. So she's like a favorite. She's mm. going to disturb him. Then there's also the other song, the Abundance in Billets from Falu Garaf Shah, featuring Narendra, uh, Narendra Modi. That's the Indian Prime Minister. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. The Indian Prime Minister is a Grammy-nominated Prime Minister. So, uh. so. Uh, Tinubu, do something. go. <laughs> <laughs> so you should go and get a vase from Ashaki or something. So yeah, so, uh, so back to it, right? So so that's like, that's also, I mean, if the Grammys are willing to nominate a prime minister. A, yeah, a song that has a prime minister in it, that means they, they might... They might as well just award yeah, it. Yeah, they might just award it. They might be also willing to give it to him. I mean, we can see they don't politicize it. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, you already nominated him. So... Nice as well. Yeah, you could just give it to him, right? So those two, mm -hmm. they are really strong, right? And that's not like even leave out the rest because you can never tell with the Grammys, right? So this is really could be a hard one for our guys. Mm. Yeah, it's going to be a hard one for our guys. But if, so it was alone, Bonner Boys alone, alone that was nominated yeah. for uh, global global uh, music performance. So yeah, so we can't tell. Alone is, sonically, I think it's the best song. It's, it's, a, it's an amazing record, right? Yeah. So yeah, you should I be able agree. to win it. But looking at these people and the tra their track record with the Grammys, the Grammys. I think they have, a good chance yeah good chance as well right so now the african uh sorry the global album category That's right we have timeless and we have i told them again what about is the favorite for this one it's fair for this one but it's going to be really difficult as well because this is as we said before this is a category with a fever called uh, conceptual indigenous. all this conceptual african and indigenous mm. traditional kind of albums right if you look at the winners the previous winners the only outlier is bonaboy that's really outlier. It's Bonner Boy. And what's funny is that even his album that won it, the Twice Star album, that is his least commercial album. Yeah. You know, he cut down on the commerciality, he cut down on the commercial appeal, the eight singles, the final mm -hmm. eight. He went for more critical acclaim. True. He got DD to executive producer, he cut it down for conciseness, cut it down to 14 tracks, I think, and, and he, he brought up the album, right? So, so I don't know. Type, uh, I told them, personally, I told them it's not the strongest body of work. Right, but he still he still got nominated because of who he is, right? His, his star power. So I I timeless, fantastic album, fantastic album, like great moments. Can you win it? Can David do actually win it on the first time of getting nominated? It's an up tax. Yeah, it's an up tax. Yeah, it right. So if you ask me, I think the favorite to win it in this particular category is Shakti. So now this is their first album in 46 years. Oh yeah, and they are, they, they are this world fusion artist from people from all around the world, like five people from one, uh, India, I think one. So it's really from, a global album. Yeah, it's a global album. There's a white guy there. So it's just this, this global concept where they play instruments and stuff like that. So it's a really proper global album. And first album for six years. So it's a, it's a big moment for them. So I think they're favorite. Again, I don't think, I don't, I, I'll be, my money is not either Bonner or, Wiz, or David, David bringing this yeah. home. I think it's going to be really hard. I think it's going to be really hard. So we have lost two categories. <laughs> so like we this. might actually 
not have like I think Pona can win, can actually win best global music performance. Even Feel is a great song, but I think I think Bona is our strongest chance there. Okay. Yeah. yeah uh, then when it comes to global album category, I just do not see us winning that. To, to be honest, it's it's going to shock me if either Davido or Bona Boy win the well, wins that category. It's really going to be surprising for me. So now to the to the debate, debate, African music performance category. Ashake, Anola B, Mama Piano, Ira Star, Rush, Davido, featuring Musa Keys, Unavailable, Bonner Boy, City Boy, and Tyler Water. Right, Tyler is the outlier. I actually think Tyler, uh, I think uh, based off projections, uh, like a couple of months ago, like five months ago, Billboard's projection, they, they actually got most of them right, except uh, Tyler. No, yeah, except Tyler, it was Party on the Stop, Adekule Good, and Tino you know, Oh. Yeah, so I think it was a sacrifice for Tyler because it, Tyler's Tyler is just too big to ignore. That song is just too big to ignore. And as a remix yeah, dropping. Yeah, they want to make it look like a Nigerian affair. So just like okay, you you have to go and there's the whole using Oniski, Mali and stuff probably being help as well. So if they're going to sacrifice, if it, it probably would, would have gone down something like it, it would go down to Ama Piano and Partner the Stop. Who do we choose? Just have to be Ama Piano. Ashake is having a fantastic year. He's been doing a great thing. So yeah, so who's gonna win it? Again, this is this is the one where Bonner Boy is clever, right? Based of precedent, it's clever, right? It's a uh, it's year in year out nominations. The Grammy know. boy. Yes, yeah, the Grammy boy year in year out nominations, and and he should he, should, he has like advantage over over the first time nominees. Crazy, yeah, because the first time nominees is the only even for that category is the first time nominee, but it's not yeah, his first time getting Grammys. nomination for the yeah, the Grammys, right? So he has precedent on the side. So uh Unavailable is a huge song. It's a huge song. It, like when it comes to releases on the continent this year, it's like the maybe the biggest song inside Africa. Outside Africa this year is going to be Tyler and Calm Down, of course, which wasn't eligible yeah. for nomination. It wasn't eligible for nomination. Let's let, let just say that a lot of people have been wondering why wasn't it nominated. It's not. It, was, it wasn't eligible. It wasn't in the window mm-hmm. of eligibility. So, so it's going to boil down to. If you ask me, I think it's going to boil down to, so unavailable uh, city boy. Shout out to Arista. I think I think yeah, Rush is exactly Rush is a great song, right? I think it's a great song, but I, 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 yeah, and she, she also has, has a chance, but I, I don't think it's as strong as that of uh, of of Bonner Boy, who, who is an Atlantic artist, or David, who is an RC artists. Oh yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah, so they have like they have two majors behind them. We also, I mean, there's uh, there's Empire, Shadow Empire, there's Empire uh, for Olavide and Ashake, but they're not. <laughs> yeah, it's not as just as strong as. So for me, I think it's between Davido and Bonaboy. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's good. So, it's going to go down to two of them. So who, between the both of them, who do you think is going to? It's going to win it. Yeah. Who bright? <laughs> Could you predict to me? <laughs> Shout out to everybody, man. So, you want to, you to, to put me in trouble, man. Pick one. They don't like me already, man. These people don't like me. They this stance. Start. They don't like me. So you want them to kill me. Who do I think is going to win it? I have to really... Because this, this is not... It's, it's just going to be my opinion. I have to use like circumstantial like yeah, facts. Yeah, yeah. facts I can, like, yeah, just like things surrounding it. I think it's going to be Bonner Boy. Hmm. I think it's going to be Bonner Boy. Why Bonner Boy? Because there's precedent. There's precedent. Um, it's familiar. It looks like it's he's, 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 he hasn't won since twice a star. Yeah. And he's lost a couple of nominations. So it's, I mean, it's prime to win this one because it's clear favorite. The song is good. The song is good. And so, yeah, so, but I think if they want to add the African part of it, because City Boy is more of an hip hop kind of song. Mm. It has hip hop leaning. Uh, uh, unavailable at Ama Piano. Rush Afrobeat. Ashake, I'm a piano, I'm a piano. Then Tyler, an hybrid of Afrobeats and R&B and stuff like that. So, and I'm a piano. So, I think unavailable standard very strong chance. There's also Tyler because you cannot predict the Grammy. Right? You cannot predict the Grammy. You can just decide to just give it Tyler, She's right? In the top twenty Billboard, right? Yeah, now. you can just decide to give it Tyler, and she just drop a remix of that song, yeah, right? You Travis can. And if that remix Those goes, ones. yeah, goes on to perform very well, the award is in February, uh, February next year. February 5th next year. And between now and February 5th, 5th next year, if that song really does well. Yeah, it does when we get into the top 10 of the billboard, That's get good, the lengthy radio good run, campaign. It's going to influence voters sure. during that period, right? So, so we, we can't rule out either. But for me, I think it's, it's going to go down 
to David Do or Bonner Boy. And I think if you ask me to to say who I, if I'm gonna put money on either of them, who I think is gonna win, I think it's Bonner Boy. All right. right. Then there's last one, of course. Shout out Bonner Boy for being the first Nigerian artist to be nominated outside of the world album categories, True. right? As a lead artist. Was nominated for best melodic rap, rap. performance for since not of the world that's a big deal it is. that shows that afrobeat is like it's a frontier for african mainstream music right so can you win it that is it's going to be an uphill tax i think i think because he's going to be coming up against uh all my life little dog and chico i think i think they're going to win it I all think, right i think that's right to win it right okay. so but fingers crossed we believe hopefully hopefully one of our own breaks on the award we have like a like seven eight guys get nominated across four categories i, I think i think i think definitely definitely there's no way we, we lose everything because <laughs> we, yeah you can't tell it's just the give the global music performance to this person album to this person that tyler just takes it's african it's performance and just, that's it because we're empty and dead but but definitely yeah. i think i think i think one of our guys is going to, is going to bring it up all right hopefully all right so my final question for you what does the future hold for african for nigerian music as regards the grammy awards i think it's bright mm. i think it's bright when you look at the grammys this year and you see when the nominees were we announced everyone was just like grammy nominated producer everybody that worked on yeah album, like, i'm the grammy nominated producer grammy nominated this. so i think this is the closest any or a lot of people in the ecosystem are going to get to getting the grammy win or nomination from exec for producers to ex executive producers you know to to mix en engineers to even songwriters and co like this is the closest they might get to getting nominated for the grammys so the future is really really great when, especially when you consider especially when you consider um the domination of nigerians in the african music performance category it's going to inspire a lot more nigerians to try their luck you know okay you see okay ira David, Bona, Ashake were all nominated next year. I think I can get it. I can, I can get it. You know, I can get it next year. So we're going to see this, this uh, more Nigerian spread uh, in the Grammys. More, more Nigerian artists will become Grammy nominated artists. Mm. It's going to really look nice for us. True. Yeah, so it's going to really look nice for the industry. Now you describe Ashake as Grammy nominated Afrobeat star. You describe Badu as Grammy nominated Nigerian rapper. You describe first of its uh, yeah. You describe uh, Arista as the Grammy nominated superstar singer. Arista, it's really nice. It is. And 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 in the coming years, uh, we can expect. I expect that because we're not going to relent, right? So I expect Nigerian music industry, our artists, to still keep dominating that particular category. Then they can possibly continue picking from different parts of the continent for you know for distribution and diversity. yeah diversity. But I, I still expect us to dominate that category, right? I also uh, Bonner Boys feet for getting into the uh, outside of the of the world mm -hmm. categories and getting to like a. Uh, a major category maybe not a major category though but getting to like outside of the category. world category yeah so it's a it's a big deal it's a big deal and if at all anything right the performance of nigerian artists and uh, the industry at large at this at the 2024 uh, grammy nominations list shows that we are the leading force you know when it comes to mainstream african music mm. and if at all african music is going to get its own album category it's going to be inspired by the success and you know an impact of nigerians this is how it started for dancehall as well today we have the the, the dancehall reggae album category we have the latino album album category and even the latin grammy entirely yeah so so possibly two years down the line we're going to see an african album category so that's going to be more representation as well mm. for everyone for nigerian artists and the african counterparts right but we have to start from somewhere and uh, it's nice to see that we actually the job is getting done you know, the doors are opening and even the old concern that oh they created an african performance category this is going to exclude us which i actually thought was ridiculous because it's just like it's just you just cried over another mass award it's not a nigerian award it's the grammys so they were saying they were the concern that oh, it's going to exclude us from the other categories they have given us a category to just show on us there and leave us there but Bonner boy gave shout to him because he's doing he's, he's doing major things for the for the nigerian music industry and for the africa ecosystem as well so he's, he's shown us that okay no that's not the truth we can actually break it to other categories and possibly with the way things are going we're not just going, we're not we're just not going to have an african music 
African album category, we could also expect that when our songs do very well, when our pop star perform entirely like like fantastically well internationally, they can get into big categories. So possibly in the future, songs like Essence, Love Quantity, Calm Down, might get yeah major nominations. Yeah. yeah, but at the end of the day, it just shows that it just shows that we are on the right path and and if we keep if we keep going this way uh then the, just the, the sky's the limit for the success of nigerian music internationally yeah that's factually.